this video, we're going to learn how to find resultant force when two or more forces acting on an object without physically having to draw a vector diagram yet. So there will be a series of questions and let's start with this one, Pure Physics 2010, question 2. When you have 3 Newton and 4 Newton acting on an object, so what's the resultant? And a lot of students straight away will think of if this is the object, both forces are in the same direction and both forces in the opposite direction. So these two are important because you will know that when this is the scenario, the resultant of 7 Newton is the maximum possible resultant force that you can achieve out of these two forces. Now on the other hand, when they are in opposite direction, the minimum will be 1 Newton. So if you understand that, that means to say any values between 1 and 7, they are possible. So straight away you will know the answer 1, yes, then 3 is possible, 5 is still within the range, yes, and 8 will be the only one that is impossible to be the resultant force because the maximum is only 7. Another resultant that you need to pay attention is when both are 90 degree to each other. If this is 4 Newton and this is 3 at the angle 90 degree, you should know that just like you're standing here, one person pulls you here, one person 4 Newton pulls you to the right, you will go roughly this way. That's the resultant. And for this case, 90 degree, uh, instead of drawing the vector diagram, you should use your Pythagoras theorem. All right, the resultant will be 4 square plus 3 square square root. So it will be 5 Newton. So 5 is when both 3 and 4 Newton are placed at 90 degree. So even if I ask you, is it possible to achieve 2.3 Newton or even 6.7 Newton? The answer is yes, because there are other possible or infinite possibility because I can put these two forces, 3 and 4 Newton at an angle as such, less than 90, then you will achieve um, a resultant force between 5 to 7 Newton, all right? Or alternatively, if I put the two forces wider apart, so if that's the case, the angle here is between more greater than 90 but less than 180, so the possible resultant force that you can achieve is between 5 to 1 Newton, okay, between 1 to 5 Newton basically. So anything is possible, but if you really want to know the exact resultant force for a specific angle, then you need to use your vector diagram construction to find the resultant. This is another question, Pure Physics 2002, question 7, if it's exactly the same, so I will skip to the next question. For this question, Combined Science 2013, question 2, is slightly similar, but there's a difference. It's more difficult because they give you a condition when the two forces can be any value between 0 to 90. So let's start with the two values here. So when the two forces are at 0 degree, that means to say 3 and 4 Newton, they are in the same direction. There's no angle 0 degree between them. Then another extreme here, 90 means this is the scenario, 3 Newton, 4 Newton, they are 90 degree apart. So as we have covered just now, the maximum is 7 Newton and for this case you do your Pythagoras theorem you know that the resultant will be 5 Newton. So given this condition between 0 and 90 for 3 and 4 Newton, so the resultant force can be anything between 5 Newton to 7 Newton. Any values within this range is possible. So 4 is out, all right? 4 is out, 5 possible, 6 possible, 7 possible or even 6.8 whatever value is possible as long as within 5 and 7. So A will be the answer. Next question, it appears in various pure physics and combined physics for a couple of years. So you have two forces, okay, acting at this point here, point O, you have 9 Newton and 12 Newton and they are 90 degree apart. So from your math, you'll know that the resultant force will be somewhere around here. Alright, just imagine you are standing at O, two person pulling you in the direction of R and P respectively, you'll go diagonally in this direction. 
and as mentioned because it's 90 degree you can use your math to help you and that will be 9 square plus 12 square square root and the answer will be 15 newton so the magnitude the size of this resultant OQ here will be 15 newton so that will be the answer so uh, another way is to straight away eliminate 21 newton because 21 newton can only be achieved if it's 9 newton and 12 newton they are in the same direction okay basically that's the maximum resultant force so likewise for the direction is very clear cut okay oq in the direction of oq okay so the answer will be a still on this question if i can modify this di this question into here okay this is or and pq and i tell you that this force here now if i change the question to there are three forces acting on the point o three forces that means there's or oq and op acting on the object o what is the resultant the magnitude of the resultant you so the answer will be different already i hope you understand because the resultant of these two which we have covered just now is over here all right and that will be 15 newton but do not forget the existing oq is also 15 newton so that makes the resultant force to be 30 newton in the direction oq so they can ask you this way and if you understand the concept you should be able to solve this in this question you have three forces acting on the object here and one glance at it you know that the resultant force cannot be zero okay straight away because there's a horizontal force to the right but there's no for horizontal force to the left so you will never achieve net force zero so there will be a resultant force and to solve this you have to consider vertical forces and horizontal forces separately let's start with the vertical forces over here which is your 8 newton and your 5 newton downwards so you should know that when they are op acting in opposite direction the resultant force acting on the ball will be effectively 3 newton upwards so we have set the resultant force vertically so for horizontal forces there's only one to the right 4 newton so you can just draw it here 4 newton and this is like the question previously you have 3 and 4 at 90 degree right now so the resultant force will be 5 newton in this direction so the resultant force will be 5 answer b for this question is very similar to the previous one so consider vertically and horizontal resultant force so you know that 6 newton and 3 newton vertically so the resultant force will be a 3 newton upwards plus the existing uh, 3 newton to the left you'll know that the resultant force will be somewhere around here you can find the value using Pythagoras theorem if not you should know that your resultant force you will move along this diagonal line to the left so b will be the answer for this example here likewise there are three forces but the key point here is this object o is stationary and according to newton's first law that means to say the net force acting or the resultant force acting on the object o is zero all the three forces cancel each other that's why it's able to remain stationary so even though it may not drawn to scale you should know that the resultant force of x and 4 newton should be along this direction and one thing you should know is it must be in line with this 5 newton opposite direction and what is the magnitude you are not given the value of x but what will be the magnitude of this resultant force since this is 5 newton it has to be 5 newton in the opposite direction in order for the resultant force to be zero then the object can remain stationary so from here as usual uh, for those who are a bit confused you can just go back to your basic in order to find the resultant force you take 4 square plus x square is equals to your 5 square okay this is your like Pythagoras theorem so in other words you want to find your x it will be square root of 5 square minus 4 square and that will be 3 newton so the answer will be b do watch the next video where there are questions that involve uh, vector diagrams but you're not physically drawing it alright